Hey there YouTube, this is Mr. Weissman 4 and you're watching part 3 of my how to program an Android tutorial. Last episode we showed you guys how to set up a project and how to get one going. Today I'm going to show you guys how to actually then run and test that project on a virtual device emulator inside of Eclipse. And then I'm going to also show you guys how to edit text field and do some stuff in the um, main XML layout. All right, starting off, we have this program that I created. Um, I created this ahead of time. If you want to learn how to create a project for the first time, go back and watch part two. It's in there. Right now, we're going to get started. This is com.example.practice1. So this is our practice one example program. I'm going to run this on my virtual device. So to create a virtual device, you go up here, Android virtual device. I have one pre-made, Tyler's test, and our test device. Let me delete this. I'm going to show you guys how to make an our test device. So new. Name it two, our test device two, and then you pick a device that you want it to emulate. Now this emulator is gonna be lo like look like the actual screen size of the device that you pick. So you can choose like a tablet, you can choose a phone, whichever one you want. My advice is pick a smaller to medium sized device, so you can then use your own device to test it on, and then one of the smaller ones so you can see how your program ends up looking on any size device through these emulators and you can download more of these online through different websites for Eclipse. So I'm going to do a medium sized screen and then we're going to use API level 4.3 leave it the same amount of RAM and space as it normally has press OK and then now our test device 2 is in here so that's done. Now that we have our virtual device created we're going to go up here, we're going to go our test device, you're going to go start. You have to start it up, give it scale to the actual size, and click launch. Now these take a little while to come on for the first time. It depends on how fast your computer is and all that sort of stuff. But once it gets to this Android screen, it'll take. It'll probably take about like a minute and a half, two minutes for it to come on. Sometimes it can take up to ten. My laptop used to take a long time for these to come on. So our device is on. Now you can see looks just like a normal phone. It's scaled to the correct size of what this actual phone looks like in real life. So now that we have that up, and you want to scale it normally to the correct size, that way you can see what it would actually look like for the user if you're making a legitimate app. But in our case, it doesn't really matter. You can make it bigger if you want. So we're going to run our application. You can't run an application from an XML file. So if you constantly click start and it's not doing anything, that's why, because it's an XML file, you have to launch it from the Java file. So you press start and it brings this up. This screen is where you can choose which device you want to launch it on. Right now, this popped up because I have my Evo plugged into the computer as well, so I could test and launch it on my own Evo, but you're not going to be able to see that, so I'm going to launch it from a test device, which is this Our Test Device Emulator Android 4.3, and that's online. They're both online. So I'm going to select this one. If you don't have another phone plugged in and another em emulator started, you're only, it's just going to automatically um, start sending the program to your phone. So I'm going to click OK. And it says uploading practice one dot apk onto device emulator five 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 four. So it's installing, and it immediately comes up and says hello world. Yay! Our app actually ran and it launched on a device. So this app would work on any device prior to four point three that you set it on, and it, it's up and running. Now let, let's get into how why some of this looks the way it does. So. As you can see, it says hello world. Why is that there? Let's go into the app and I'll show you how. The Basically, in Android, the layout is controlled by what is called an XML file. The XML file specifies how a screen or activity, like our main activity, which launches at launch startup, looks. So it says set content view r.layout.activity main, which is this, and this is, describes how it looks. So it's padding bottom, vertical margin, horizontal margin. This sets its um, the actual activities screen layout to be the size of the phone. It's in context of main dot activity and it's layout and height match parent. You don't really need some of this stuff in here, especially in relative views. It'll work without it. I can go into that later. But right now I want to show you why this text view looks the way it does. So we have a text view and the standard, it always needs a layout width and a layout height that tells it how big it is. This, um, the, the, right now, since it's both on wrapped content, the text is going to look however the, si the text size is that you specify. So say I want to make that text bigger. I go Android dot text and scroll down to text size. 
And text size in Android works in sizes of SP, which will scale depending on the screen size as well. So always use SP when you do this. So if I want to make it bigger, I do 45 SP. I'm going to save. I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to relaunch our program. Let me go back out of this. There we go. Launching our test device again. It's going to re upload our APK and it'll be changed. As you can see, that's a lot bigger now. So that's how you can change the screen size of a text on here. But where is this text coming from? Let's go into that next. So where is that text coming from? All right. So we go into here. It says android.text is equal to at string slash hello world. Now, you could just do this if you wanted to. Whatever. Like that. Just type whatever you want inside of that text field. Save it. And run it. I'm going to re-upload it again. Back out of you, it's just going to close it anyway. And it shows what I typed right in there. So, where was that hello world at? And a lot of people I've noticed online seem to ask us when they first get into um, Android programming. They don't understand where that's first coming from or why it's there. So, there's a file in the Android layout screen over here, like in the folder directory, under values called strings.xml. This is the standard place where you should put all your strings that you're going to put in your app, and you hard code them right into here. So, and they're referenced by name. So string, name, app name, practice one. You could change that. That's what's actually showing up when we launch our program. I get it. Clock. Go over here. Practice one. You see that practice one down there? That's this app name right here. When we launch it, it's also showing up up there. If I were to change that in this string file, it would also change that name there. And then the hello world, which is named and it's string is hello world. If I were to change this to hello foo, go back into here and re-reference the hello world string, then it will now say hello foo. There you go. So that's how you can change a text file. In there, you can do a lot of other stuff with the with strings and text files in here. Uh, in some of my actual apps I've done, you can end up having thousands of strings in these. You want you want to come up with a convention of organizing them. What I do a lot of the times is we'll have strings, and then you can actually put in XML a comment like this. My strings. And then organize them like that, and then say, like, my main strings, and then indent things like that to help to help yourself organize what strings go where and that sort of thing inside the XML file, so that you can have some kind of layout hierarchy structure, whatever works for you when you're typing inside of the XMLs. But you reference things in other XML files within a main layout XML by doing at whatever the name of that XML is, slash, and then the name of the piece of data or whatever it is that you're trying to pull out. If I were to go into dimensions or styles, which we'll get into more of this later, you can also do the same type of comments and things and same with drawables as well. So I'll do that in my next video. This was just how to launch the actual app on a virtual device and how to change some of the basic text layout and stuff like that that it has when you first start up. I hope this helps. Please, guys, while you're watching this, leave comments and let me know other things that you'd like to see, and I'll, I would love to go and explain it to you and do a much more in-depth, detailed video on those right now. I'm just kind of going along at my own pace, whatever you guys want to see, and I'm doing it like that. So let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed watching, and hope this was informative and helped. Thanks for watching.